Welcome back to another Squirrely Tip video, and today we're going to talk about 10 real tips to help you progress quickly in Epic 7. If you follow this video versus someone who doesn't follow any of these rules, I guarantee that if you compare the two accounts after three months, the state of progression would be very different. And I follow all of these rules myself. I mean, for my progression, it took about two months to clear all the PvE content in the game, about four months to get to Legend. So if you're a new player and you're trying to figure out how to catch up to your friends as quickly as possible, you really want to follow these rules. So let's get started. Number one, and probably the most important rule, is to always play efficiently. Now there's really two kinds of efficiency, time efficiency and energy efficiency, but I'm going to assume you're a whale and talk about energy efficiency instead. If you're a whale, um, then you probably care more about time efficiency because you don't have any energy problems. But basically, the easiest part to understand about this is never use your energies outside of events so you see these energies they actually expire and you'll notice that i hold on to them as long as possible to save them for an event and the other big thing is if you're gonna buy energy with sky stones never do it outside of hunt events if you're gonna buy energy with leaves never buy them outside of hunt events because basically you want to make sure that you're getting the most gold and equipment possible for the energy you have the limited energy you have if you're free to play you don't ever want to waste it on a time when you have no bonuses i think it's probably the most important rule to follow if you're trying to make sure that you're getting the best bang for the buck the other thing is always make sure you're using the max amount of energy possible by never keeping it maxed out. I see a lot of YouTubers do this all the time and I don't understand it where they have like 10,000 of 144 energy. If you have more than your maximum amount of energy, it means you're never regening it. And that's basically a free energy every five minutes that you're throwing away. So if you have work or stuff, just bang out your energy in the morning and then do it at night but the point is every energy you lose by being maxed out is energy you can't use to progress so point number one is basically to be as energy efficient as possible by never using extra energies outside of bonus events and never letting energy be wasted by not letting it regenerate so now let's go to number two Never let anything expire. What do I mean by expire? Well, number one, obviously energy. But what I really mean is doing all your dailies every day. Your daily, whatever, what do you call it? Three Sisters Diary Daily Missions. You have to do that every day. You have to buy, it's not really considered a daily quest, but the things that regenerate daily, mainly the daily energy friendship thing and the conquest point token. Sometimes I see people skip these because they're like, oh, I need conquest points to buy the arena gear. Don't worry about that. It's just going to go in the shop and you're going to eventually have more than enough. I mean, I have like 5,000 conquest points. Um, always buy this every day, no matter what. The other thing is basically don't let things run out. Make sure you're purifying Abyss every day. Make sure the three tokens you get a week for Hall of Trials, you're using all of them before the end of the week. Make sure you're doing Labyrinth so that the one Labyrinth token a day you get doesn't expire. Basically, never let anything expire. And the other thing is, you have to be doing all of your banner quests every single day. Right now, it's a extraordinary chocolate extravaganza. We also have the World Arena event. Th these things have crazy rewards. And the most important thing is the rewards are usually energy. You need to do them every day. Never, ever, ever skip it. Number three, this is a quick one, but basically join a guild. I mean, you need to join a guild. And if you join a good guild, basically they'll have rules set up where you're always giving each other aid. Uh, my guild are kind of conventions we keep swapping manager aid claws over and over. And this lets you really uh, build artifacts really fast because with the Brave Crush you get, you can just keep buying lesser artifact charms and also this other junk if you want, like catalysts and stuff. Join a guild that's smart enough to basically, a lot of times it's like um, those spirit altar things, but just keep swapping things back and forth so you can keep progressing. Obviously, the other reason is then you can do world boss and also do guild wars to get mystic medals, the easiest source of mystic medals in the game. And of course, outside of that, 
you also always get the guild blessing of wealth and blessing of knowledge. It doesn't seem like a lot, 10% golden experience, but over the course of a year, it's a lot. Like in the course of a year, that basically means you get more than a month of extra gold and experience versus someone who didn't have this. So if you're not in a guild, that's crazy. Join a guild, even if it's a trash one, just to get these bonuses. If you're stronger, join a good guild so you can get into higher guild wars and get more mystic medals. If you're in Glorious Guardian, you can basically get five mystic summons a week for free. You need to do that. Number four is very important. It's to upgrade equipment consistently. It doesn't always need four perfect subs. If you look at my Judge Key say, I'm still using that... Um, Whatever that first adventure thing is called, that adventure quest when you start the game, I'm still using some of that gear. It's really good. I mean, I got 25 crit damage on this one. One problem I see people do is they start doing too much research and they're like, oh, the best gear is 85 gear, so I'm not going to roll anything unless I get 85 gear with perfect subs. And they struggle because they can't clear any of the end game content because they're refusing to roll anything that isn't perfect. Roll whatever you can get. You'll get that great gear later on, but without getting the intermediary gear, you're never going to be able to clear the content. It's going to really bog you down. If you get anything decent, like in the beginning when you're trying to clear Wyvern, if you get any blue 85 with the main stat you want and all the subs are trash, still upgrade it. You need to have some kind of progression. So tip number four is upgrade equipment consistently. It doesn't always need to be perfect gear. Tip number five, also a very important tip, kind of building on that last one, focus on PvE first. Do not worry about PvP. This is one of the most common mistakes I see people make because they get into Epic 7, they love the game, they're really interested, and right away they're like, oh, I need to watch all these legend arena players and figure out the comps, figure out the meta, blah, blah, blah. And then they want to build these heroes, but guess what? Like The strongest legend character right now is probably Bassar. Bassar is freaking everywhere. You know how good Basar is at PvE? He's horrible. I mean, he's not horrible, but he's certainly not going to carry you through PvE. Like, if you're building, like, Fallen Cecilia, really strong, but she's not going to carry you through PvE. I mean, you can use her, but it's not going to be a quick clear by any means. And this really hamstrings people because in the beginning, they keep building these PvP heroes, building people for PvE, and they suck at it anyway. Like, if you can't even do Wyvern 11, I guarantee you, you're not going to make it to even Challenger. Like, everyone that's in Champion and Legend can pretty much auto all the PvE content in the game. So if you can't do that, you don't stand a chance. So instead of worrying about PvP, make your goals clearing Raid, clearing Hell Raid, making sure you can beat all of Abyss, making sure you can auto all the hunts, because that's how you're going to get the gear that you really need to compete. Until you can do 100% of the PvE content in the game easily, I guarantee you, none of the top PvPers are going to have any problem swatting you aside in Arena. So focus on PvE first. You're not going to be good at PvP until you can do all of that. Trust me. Tip number six. This is going to seem kind of weird after the last tip, but don't completely ignore PvP. Other people go the wrong way and basically say, Oh, I need to focus on PvE, so I'm never going to do Arena. And you just sit on their Arena flags. You want to do PvP because you want to get the conquest points, you could get your arena gear. If you really hate PvP, you could still do the NPC challenge. It's a consistent, easy way to get crystals. But the main thing is, I mean, bronze, silver, and gold are so easy, like the defenses are half the time just razzes. At least get to gold, not so much because PvP matters, but because you want to get these weekly rank rewards. The weekly rank rewards are probably the easiest and most stable source of sky stones in the game. I usually end in champion, so I usually get 800 crystals a week for free, basically. That's like almost 3,500 crystals a month, depending on where I end up. So it's a really good source of resources. Don't neglect it completely. Like, don't be unranked. If you want to stay in bronze, fine, but at least do it. And getting to gold should not be difficult at all for anyone even semi-serious about the game. I think it took me like one week to get to gold, so it's really not that big a deal. Tip number seven, always clear content with the minimum number of characters required. I don't mean like Abyss or anything, but I mean mostly when you're farming. Make sure that you're always leveling fodder. Like if you can clear a map with one level 60 dog walker, 
don't bring a team full of 60s to something like this. Like, basically, you want to use mostly fodder, because you're always going to need fodder. Um, right now I have like 36 stars. You're always going to be pulling new heroes. You're always going to want to awaken them and all that stuff. So trust me, you're never going to run out of a requirement for fodder. In all your farming, make sure you're doing it efficiently. Always bring Mega Phantasms, Giga Phantasms if you have them. Bring like your fodder. Um, usually I like to get the level 5 ones from Friendship Summons to make it a little faster. Always be leveling fodder as much as you can. Number 8 is don't spread out your gear and goat mola investments too much. This is a very common mistake as well. A lot of people get too interested in too many heroes basically that have similar kits. And then instead of having like 5 or 10 really strong heroes, they end up having like 30 average heroes. You don't want to do that. If you look at me, like you'll see that the heroes that I do put molas in, I put a lot of molas in usually like nine or higher. And basically it's because you want to have a small handful of heroes that can carry you through everything in the game. This game is great in that it's actually pretty well balanced despite what people want you to think. The vast majority of the heroes in the game can do pretty well in all content if you invest into them. The main reason most heroes suck is because people aren't willing to invest into them. But even things like Fighter Maya or something, well, she's pretty good. But a plus 15 Fighter Maya is going to hit like a truck. But if you have a plus 0 Fighter Maya, you just basically ignore it. She's completely useless. So make sure that once you pick the heroes that you actually want to use, get them to plus 10 or higher, fully awaken them, make sure that you're not spreading out your gear and in, like uh, Molagoras into too many heroes, or you're never going to get strong enough to progress in the game. Just find the 4 or 5 heroes you love the most and invest into them fully before you branch off to experimenting with other heroes. Number 9, and I know the gamblers out there will hate this, don't do Covenant Summons ever. Now, I know you guys, like some people are going to disagree with me here because they're going to be like, the Covenant Pool is the only one that has ML5s in it. You know what? The chance for you to get an ML5 from a Covenant Summon is 0.15%. That is not enough to justify wasting bookmarks on Covenant Summons. Why? Because in the beginning, you want to be pulling on these guaranteed banners because you're going to have holes. In the beginning, if you like selective summon a DPS, what do you need suddenly? A good soul weaver, or maybe a good tank, or maybe, I don't know, a dog walker or a single target DPS for bosses. Your kit has so many holes early on in the game, and the best way to fill it is with these guaranteed summons. And guess what? You can't do the guaranteed summons if you blew all your bookmarks on Covenant Summons. I can tell you that in my entirety of the game, I've probably done less than 100 Covenant bookmarks. I've never gotten an ML5 from Covenant bookmarks ever, not even from my dailies. A lot of my guildies have the daily free one. I've always pulled on banners only. And if you watch my summon series, I kind of proved that because basically I do nothing but pull on the banners. Please don't do Covenant Summons unless you're feeling really lucky for some reason. Every once in a while, it's not that bad. But I know people who will like be saving for a limited summon, trying to get to 600 bookmarks, and then they'll get drunk or something and be like, oh, I'm going to get Arbiter Villager right now. They blow through all their bookmarks, they get nothing, and they're like, oh, shit. And that's like two, three months worth of bookmarks for someone who's free to play. So never, never pull on Covenant Summons. Trust me, just don't do it. It's not worth it in terms of progression. And number 10, I saved this one for last because it might be controversial for some of you super anal F2P players out there, but it's just to buy these two monthly packs. I mean, it's 15 bucks a month. I mean, even with inflation, I was playing WoW like a decade ago. It was still 15 bucks a month back then. It's really not that much money. If you don't want to do 15, at least buy this monthly pack one. It's actually the much better pack anyway. But trust me, these packs are going to make you progress so much faster than someone who doesn't have it. If you buy for an entire year, that's like 25,000 energy from the monthly pack too. And I don't want to do the conversion in my head, but basically 30 energy is, um, you can kind of pretend like you get 180 energy the first day and 60 energy every day for that. So it's a lot of energy that you get for $5. So if you want to be truly, truly free to play, fine, whatever, like you can ignore this advice. But trust me, this monthly pack is really going to accelerate your growth if you're really serious about getting ahead in the game. 
and honestly like five bucks like you can't even get a coffee at starbucks for five bucks it's really not a big deal for a month of play so anyways um some other quick uh runner-ups that don't make the top 10 if you want you can also do the little trick you can watch some other youtube video on it where you check the labyrinth level one for the secret shop every day um just making sure you have buffs up all the time when you farm. Make sure that when you start the game, the first thing you invest into is the Heart of Orbis so that you can receive your Crystal and Gold Skystone rewards. Those are just some small tips. Make sure you're always leveling this, leveling up your Mega Phantasms. Those are pretty basic. If you have any questions about that, you can just leave it in the comment section below. But anyways, um, other than that, I'm going to wrap this video up. I think those are the 10 main tips that you should follow to try and progress quickly. Um, and if you disagree with any of that, go ahead and let me know. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you like and subscribe if you want to see more tip videos. I'm going to do a lot more of them shortly. I'm probably going to do a pet one soon. So, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Take care and uh, good luck on your Epic 7 hunting. Peace out.